The hidden costs of 3D printed houses. That is what this video is about. And my name is Alex Sheen. I'm the CEO of Control C Construction. It's good to be with you, but you don't really know who I am or care about that. So we're not gonna dive into our organization. We're just gonna get to the topic here about the costs of building a 3D printed house. You know, there's a lot of misleading information out there, almost, almost straight out lies, to be honest with you. Uh, a lot of marketing fluff and hype in the media. We need to dive a little bit deeper, look at the details, talk about these hidden costs. And we're gonna talk about four different places where those costs pop up. Shipping, concrete challenges, something I'll call the inevitable curve, and testing and permitting. Let's dive into the first area here with shipping. It's true for any product, for any service. You need to account for shipping and sometimes that is not entirely obvious. I mean, even in something like a gallon of milk, right, that we're all familiar with, did you know that because of shipping costs, a gallon of milk in Hawaii can be as much as $9, right? Some things aren't just that intuitive and that can be true in 3D printed houses. You know, there's a big cost of moving things around, specifically the machine itself, that 3D printer. It could cost as much as $5,000 to move one of these machines. And as soon as you see an image of one, it kind of makes sense. This is from Kobod in a two-story structure that they recently built. But this is a big thing that needs to move around. And if you see some of the fluffy marketing out there, for other uh, 3D printed houses and the cost will say something like $10,000 to build the house. It's like, well, to move the machine from location to location could be 5,000, that's 50% of the cost. That sounds like a hidden cost to me. And even when you're not moving the machine, right? In the case of let's say Cybe, who they will print walls and parts uh, of that construction in like a warehouse and then move those walls on site. Well, that sounds like a shipping cost to me. And so we'll call that a hidden cost as we move on to concrete challenges. Now I'm saying the actual material concrete itself. If you're in construction and you're familiar with this space, you know what concrete is. But for those who might not be, it's air, cement, water, and then aggregates, which could be sand, natural gravel, crushed stone, whatever. Uh, what the reason why I bring this up is that this stuff needs to dry, right? And purists out there are gonna say it's not drying, it's curing, okay, I, I'd agree with that. You can actually take a piece of cement, throw it in a pond and it'll harden. But, but the point is time. It takes time. You can't just print layer after layer after layer nonstop. You've got to wait for each section to cure. And that's pointed out pretty clearly here in this icon video. They make 3D printed uh, construction robots, right? You can literally see the difference in the coloration between those layers based on the curing time. That's what this is. The difference in color here is time and time is money. Now there are accelerators that you can add to concrete to make them dry faster, but even that costs money. So anyway, you slice it, it's just a hidden cost. Now, while we're on the topic of the material itself, We've got to bring up the concept of proprietary concrete. Know that some of these manufacturers who make these machines make you use their concrete, and that is a hidden cost that some people don't know about. Now, that's not true for every one of these machines. Some companies don't do that, but just wanted to point that out for those who aren't familiar. The next thing I want to talk about is something we'll call the inevitable curve. And when I say curve, I really mean a learning curve in somewhat a literal way. Now entering any space, even as an individual, entering a new profession, let's say you wanted to be a doctor or you wanted to, to sew shoes, it doesn't matter what it is that you're doing, there's gonna be a learning curve to it and that learning curve is gonna take time, right? It's gonna take labor, it's gonna make mistakes, create challenges, the do-overs that are gonna cost money. And I think that's really well highlighted in a video by Jarrett Gross, who is perhaps unarguably the leading YouTuber on the subject of 3D printed houses. He did an interview with Henrik Lund Nielsen, the CEO and founder of Kobod, which is in Denmark. And if you watch this hour long video, you'll hear this CEO of perhaps the most advanced uh, a company in this space say that to get through this learning curve and these costly mistakes, it's gonna take 10 builds, 10 houses to get through that. 
Now, 10 may not seem like a lot, but let's keep the nascency of this industry in mind with this uh, video from CNBC, right? Titled, Here's What the th First 3D Printed Home for Sale Looks Like. Okay, first 3D printed home is what that says. This video came out February 25th, 2021. That's like four months ago, okay? We are not that far along in the space. So if the most advanced manufacturer of this technology is saying, well, it takes you 10 builds, some of these companies like SQ4D mentioned in that CNBC clip and, and, and others like Icon, they haven't even built 10 houses in the United States. So what that learning curve looks like for each one of these technologies will be interesting to learn but that's just speaking to the people who actually make the machine what if you come down to the level of a construction company a builder that's going to have maybe even additional hidden costs to it now to get through that we can't be building one house at a time like we're seeing across the united states we got to build a whole entire subdivision so we can reduce that changeover cost that shipping cost from location to location just move it down a uh, hundred yards and then we also can get through this learning curve uh, faster better that is of course a hidden cost that learning curve which parlays into this next thought of testing and permitting, which is completely unique in many ways to 3D printed construction. I'm gonna read just two sentences from this Reuters article titled, Printed in Days, a, a House. New York firm takes 3D printing to the next level. This is what they say in this article. The demo house was built by construction firm SQ4D to show the public and industry what was possible. Now the company is putting one up for sale, a still to be built house in nearby Riverhead, which has been listed on property site Zillow at $299,000. Now that maybe sounds interesting or exciting, but there is something here that we really got to point out. They said they built a demo house. Okay, that means they literally built, and I, I know this for a fact, they built this house, the first demo house, in a location on a site that it is illegal for that house to have someone live in it. It's, it's, it's not zoned residential, it's, it, no one will ever live in that house, ever, okay? It was completely just to test, and, and perhaps part of that obviously being permitting as well. So when we say that the house was $299,000 listed, are we saying that the cost of that demo house, that test, is that in that cost? Or is that kind of washed out in, in corporate accounting, right? It's something we need to think about. And when we visit the SQ4D website itself, we see that house that made it to market as project number two, 1900 square foot house. Fun fact, they actually received a thousand offers on this house. That's how exciting this space is uh, to sell 3D printed homes. The first project that they did uh, was that proof of concept that no one will ever live in and uh, let's advance all the way to where they're at today how many houses have they gotten to they're only on project number three so we've got to keep in this learning curve uh, in mind we've got to understand that there's some testing permitting challenges that are not understood across the, the united states in all of these different areas cities uh, we've got to keep that in mind in hidden costs so uh with that shipping as well concrete challenges the inevitable curve we talked about testing and permitting and you may say well alex after watching this video uh kind of a negative nancy or whatever right no let me be very clear i believe deeply deeply in this technology and personally i'm investing in it through control c construction and and, and our company because i believe this has an incredible future for our organization as well as humanity itself. We've got to understand that all technologies go through a curve and when you can see and spot where everything's going, uh, it's very exciting. Let's take, for example, Netflix, okay? Now, fun fact, this is an internet archive way back machine snapshot of literally what the Netflix website was on October 4th of 2007. Flashback to that year and you will know that the average household in the United States simply did not have the bandwidth to stream movies at their house. But that was the year, 2007, when they introduced it for the first time. 
However, Netflix knew the trajectory of internet speed and infrastructure. They saw that the, it was headed there. The, the writing was on the wall. Well, if the, if the writing was on the wall for them, for 3D printed construction, this might as well be a truck stop bathroom. Okay, now that's a very strange analogy and I kind of regret saying it, but the point is that these hidden costs and challenges can be overcome. And, and I think there's reasons just practically why that's true, why that's true, but I think there are market-based reasons as well. I mean, look at the housing industry, how massive it is. Netflix was incentivized in their space to move forward and create profitability in their market. Now, now recognize that the housing market in just the United States is $36.2 trillion. That isn't a typo, I didn't misspeak. $36.2 trillion. There is so many reasons economically why this is going to advance and technology is gonna change processes developed, uh, just a huge opportunity for investment. And investment now, you know, it's organizations, construction companies need to prepare right now to meet the future. Because if you act when everything is solved, when you act when it's obvious, you're gonna be years too late. Uh, this automation is coming for this space and that's why Control C Construction, a 3D printed housing company is excited to be here. Remember that automation has touched so many other industries already. Literally fast food, hamburgers that you eat, right? warehousing, agriculture, everything has been affected by automation, by robots, and that is going to be true for 3D printed houses as well. Again, my name is Alex Sheen, uh, but Kevin Harden, our Chief Engineering Officer, Greg Sheen, our Chief Construction Officer with Control C Construction. I just really appreciate their time. And if you like this video, press that subscribe button, hit the notification uh, bell so you don't have to keep watching uh, Jared Gross's videos over and over and over again. Great stuff, but we wanna be a source for you as well. I hope you have a great day, and I hope that you just stay interested in this really fast moving area. Okay, bye.